heck? Yes, ma'am, that's the Milky Way. That is the Milky Way. Okay, check it out. Go ahead. You gotta be quick. Good morning and welcome to Buffalo Butte here in Western South Dakota and another episode here on Dakota Starry Nights. So last night we were out here at this beautiful dark site, Category 1, and we were comparing this 16-inch Dobsonian Hubble Optics telescope to this Telescope Service 102 F11 refractor. You might be thinking, how could you compare a 16 inches of aperture to 4 inches of aperture? There's no contest there. Well, generally speaking, you'd be right. That 16 inches of aperture is gonna beat this four. But when it comes to the moon and the planets, there's a little bit of a factor there that the 16 inch has a disadvantage of, and that is atmospheric turbulence. There's a number of reasons why. And one of them is because the refractor is looking through a smaller column of air. Now, I don't know about you, but out here in South Dakota, most nights we're lucky to get just average seeing. And oftentimes it's below average. Uh, there's a rare night or two out there that you can count on one hand in the whole year that you're going to get excellent seeing and clear skies and above average transparency. When it comes to high powered views of planets or the moon, you need really good seeing, including when you're doing solar work during the daytime. Those high power views are magnifying any atmospheric turbulence that may be in the sky or the air column that you're looking through. And that's why a small refractor can typically beat a larger aperture telescope on most nights. Now last night we were out here with these two instruments and we had a blast. It was great. We started the night out with looking at Jupiter, and it was low on the horizon, possibly 10, 9 degrees, and Saturn wasn't much better. As the night progressed and the planets got higher, the views got better. But still, because of the seeing wasn't just optimal, the refractor gave a more crisp, high contrast image, whereas the Dob, it was looking through such a large column of air the image tend to be a little distorted and you had to keep the power down, otherwise it was just going to turn to mush. Now one surprising factor last night was when we turned to the moon. Now on the dark side of the moon, that is the side that wasn't being lit, you were able to discern slight hints of craters and features on the dark side which was really a treat. Now the refractor on the dark side, it was just jet black. It was really nothing uh, discernible. So there's where that aperture really kicked in pretty good. And because we were able to keep the powers down, I would give last night's performance of the moon to the Dob. But there's some things you need to consider. A Dob is harder to move around and set up. It's gonna cost more with larger aperture. But these days you can get a pretty decent ED refractor like this telescope service F11. It's amazing how far optics have come and how low prices have come down for an instrument such as this. So if your speciality is the moon and the planets, you might want to consider a refractor before you jump into a larger aperture daub. The other nice thing about a refractor is that you can put them on go-to mounts and keep the tracking going when you're viewing at high power, and that comes in kind of handy. You kind of see more when you're able to stay on the target for an extended period of time without having to bump it all the time, and so refractors have that advantage too. They also have an advantage where they don't, you don't need to collimate them, and that's one of the things about a daub. 
Unless you're getting a Schmidt Cassegrain or some scope of that nature, you need to collimate the daub. And when you're going to high powers, you really need to be spot on. Otherwise things really start to, you know, show in a bad kind of way. So that's why I say a refractor, it's a great scope because you could use it in a grab and go type situation. This is on an Explorer Scientific uh, Twilight 2 mount. And I can throw this thing together on any night, let's say 10 minutes, whereas a daub's gonna take you quite a bit more time to do that kind of setup. So it's not prone to a quick view of the planets. In the city, you can view a planets, and that's the nice thing about that, and you can also see the moon. Well, folks, that'll do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it and found some of this information useful. If you have some questions or perhaps you have some suggestions, we'd really appreciate the whole Astronomy Academy. Post them down here below this video and share some of your thoughts or ideas because that's how we're learning. We're all learning from each other. You know, when I'm looking at videos, I always read the comments because sometimes you can learn as much or more on the comment section than you can on the video. <laughs> And, you know, hopefully in this one, it'll be an equal amount of knowledge on the comments and the video, and you all find this useful. Sun's coming up, and it's in my eyes. It's like, what, 5 o'clock in the morning? You know, I've been up all night, so I think I'm going to get some shut-eye before I head on back to the house. Until next time, clear skies, and thanks for tuning in to Dakota Starry Nights. And y'all stay safe. Hey, thanks. What'd you think? Was that good last night? Oh, yeah! <laughs> All right. <laughs>